6.30 p.m. If you could please join me in pledging allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Please note that uh, Councillor Buller is absent and he he's not expected to be at the next meeting either. He is uh, taking a little vacation with his family. Um, we'll go to the agenda. We have a couple of additions that came out of land use and legislation earlier today. Uh, the first is a um, cigarette uh, license for Midwest Dabin Cabin. The second would be a uh, Iditarit uh, license for uh, the Twisted Tacos food truck. Second, third one would be to allow the Twisted Tacos food truck to be set up in Smoky Bear Park for June 14th through the 22nd. And the last is for a uh, food truck license for on the hook fish and chips. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda with those additions. So we have a motion by Councilor Second. Second by Councilor Holden. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Go to the minutes of May 20th, the regular city council meeting. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Wegner. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. And the minutes of the May 24th, 2024. Uh, special City Council meeting. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Second. Second by Councillor Wagner. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. <clears throat> Next, we go to the uh, resolution approving the transfers and payments of claims. We have International Falls uh, transfers going to the 101 General Fund in the amount of $372.99. Uh, that's coming from the 812 Lodging Tax Fund. We have accounts payable, International Falls claims of $279,852.54. Airport Commission claims of $35,237.97 and airport major capital project claims of $82,825 for a total of accounts payable of $397,915.51. The chair would entertain a motion to adopt the payments and claims. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. Ooh, I, oh, go ahead. Jeez, I'm going to get to Councilor Yeah, Taylor. Well, quite all right. All right, we have a motion. I don't have to second. do none of that. I'm, I'm there twice. I'm good. You guys all carry right. on. Yeah. You know what? Maybe this time, just because we have some people missing, let's just do the roll call this way. So we have a motion and a second. Call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Go to audience. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to bring something forward that's not on the agenda? You'll have an opportunity later at the meeting as well. We'll go down to new business, Independent School District 361 referendum information. Jessica Crosby, School Board Director. You want to come up and then just speak, and then that way everyone can hear you. And if you want to take it off of there, if you're going to yeah, move gonna, about, you sure can. Oh my gosh. Is it on? Is the light on? There we go. I'm all over this. Yeah, there's a PowerPoint behind you. Um, so I'm on the School District uh, 361 Board of Education, and I wanted to come here today to inform about the upcoming referendum in August. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we got here what our 10-year facility plan is, the community engagement that we did, board action, and the questions.
there we go. So kind of how we got here. So this started way back in February of 22, even before I was on the school board. Uh, they engaged with a facilities consultant through a competitive process. So they had, uh, the consultants kind of did a bid process, even though it wasn't really a bid financially, but they went through a competitive process. They picked the facilities uh, consultants, which is called Nexus. It's out of the Twin Cities. And then in March uh, 2022 to February 2023, that company came up and did a comprehensive analysis, meaning they went through everything. They went into closets, they went under the stairs, they went in the basement, they went everywhere. So um, that happened over the course of a year. They had to get different specialists up here to do that. Um, then in June of 2022, we surveyed the staff on facility needs. So all the teachers, janitors, the cooks, everybody that works in the school, kind of what do you need, what are we lacking? And then in February 2023, uh, they reviewed the audit findings with the administration. That's when I first started on the school board. And then we reviewed, can you, oh, I can stand behind you. We reviewed the audit, they reviewed the audit findings with the board, and then in April of 2023, we formed a community facilities task force and surveyed the community. So you might all remember getting that survey in the mail about, you know, here's what we're kind of proposing and, you know, prioritize this from your perspective in the community of what you would like to see at the school. In July of 2023, we got that, uh, those survey results back. Um, I work for a company where anything less than 100% participation is considered failure. <laughs> but we did get um, what they considered to be a great response on this type of a survey. Um, it was about 18%, which I thought we could have done better, but about 18% of the community responded. Uh, then we did a task force review of survey results. So that task force, the community task force, reviewed all the survey results from the community and they formed a recommendation. And then finally, the task force came and presented to the school board and talked about what the recommendations were, what the priorities were from their perspective and from the community's perspective. So really what we did was a 10-year facilities plan and this book Right here is what Nexus gave us. This is a $40 million 10-year facilities plan for all of the facilities in School District 361. Um, obviously, we have recommendations for the most critical needs, and so we, we broke it down into you know critical need, next three years, and then medium need in the next five years, five to seven years, and then the, the later needs of seven to 10 years. So it's all broken down in the book. Uh, the most critical needs that we thought should be addressed and the recommendation from the community were building infrastructure, technology, safety, security, and um, Americans with Disabilities Act, interior finishes, site improvements, and educational adequacy. So what that means is what a, the, the Community uh, Engagement Task Force kind of came forward and they said, you know, this is what we, they did. They, they looked at the education. It, Education nowadays is different from when you and I went to school. And I mean, I, it wasn't that long ago that I was in school. <laughs> but um, it's completely different. Like we were focused on teacher-based learning. Teachers lectured, we took notes, we studied for the test, you took the test and you went. Now education is based more on group learning. They do group projects that students are learning from each other. Um, they're volunteering more, you know, it's more group-based learning. So that's kind of what we're talking about with 21st century education. So they went through the facilities as well, the community uh, group did. They took the teacher and staff facility reports, like we said before, and then they recommended that plan to the school board. I'm gonna go to the next one. All right, so what are our top priorities? Our top priorities are, and this is again based on community input, major building systems, safety and security at the elementary school, update the classrooms, labs, and technical education, and then the building exterior and site work. So those are our top four priorities. Now the other thing we asked on the survey was what is the tax tolerance? Because we all know that people in our community are pretty much taxed out. So what is the tolerance in the community? Can we do a $40 million referendum? Probably not, so what is the tolerance? The tolerance was determined based on the responses from the survey to be at about 15 million. So if you wanna switch to the next one. 
So key improvements at the high school, and I'm just gonna pick out a couple here. So big things at the high school, the kitchen. It's all the uh, facilities, all the appliances are old and outdated. Some of them don't work. They've been taped together with duct tape, some of them. And also the flow of the kitchen. It's not like when we went to school and how they serve meals, they do it completely different now. So one of the biggest things is to totally revamp that kitchen. Also at the high school, you know when you walk through the front doors and the concession stand is right there and it gets real congested in the front area there. So what they're gonna do is the wall between the cafeteria and the hallway, that glass wall, is gonna be removed and it'll become more of a common area. And then with the redo of the kitchen, they're gonna put the new concession stand back in the kitchen so that it won't be so congested when you come in. Another thing is the bathrooms all need to be redone. The bathrooms will get redone at the high school. Data cabling, they redid the data cabling seven years ago, it's already outdated. I mean, you guys know that, it goes fast. Um, and I'll show you on these, grid, on these layout boards in a little bit, but you can kind of see here, this is the elementary school. So at the high school, here's that area commons area, kitchen's gonna be all redone, expanded commons right here, this wall will be removed. Um, and then the bathrooms, purple is heavy remodeling. So, and then another huge project that they're gonna do at the high school is, which I think is kind of exciting, is in technical education. So back here where we've got the shop rooms, having them interconnected in the back with a huge bay that spans across all these classrooms so they can do projects together. So you'll have welding will work on part of a project. The woods car, you know, would work on another project. Drafting would draft it up. And then they'd have this huge bay in the back where they could all work on it together. So that's kind of exciting at the high school. You wanna go to the next one? At the elementary school, there's a few bigger things that need to be done in terms of Americans with Disabilities Act. I bet you didn't know that there is not an elevator in Falls Elementary. We need to get an elevator in Falls Elementary. For the last however many years, to comply with ADA, they have had one grade level classroom on the first floor and other ones up above. So there's always gonna be a first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade classroom, one classroom on the first floor for a child that can't maybe make the stairs and then the, all the other ones upstairs. Having an elevator would enable the classrooms to be together and the teachers to work together. Another huge improvement at Falls Elementary, I don't know if you've been there lately, but where the preschool and the kindergarten rooms are, the walls don't go all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> they're three quarter, literally they're three quarter walls. So there's a lot of disruption where you can hear and also the special education classrooms are down there and when they have any kind of disruption in the special education classroom that carries over to the preschool and the kindergarten rooms. So that's a huge thing we're gonna do. The biggest thing though at Falls Elementary, because Falls Elementary is really not secure. The doors are locked, but if you get let in the front door of Falls Elementary, you do not have to go to the office. Okay, so if you get in the door and somebody just flips the button and doesn't look, somebody could get into Falls Elementary and just walk around the school. So the proposal is at the front here where you do walk in now today, adding a whole administration wing so that you would have to come into Falls Elementary, be in the office, get checked in, and then be allowed into the school. And then where the current offices are, make it into a STEM, STEAM area to promote that kind of education with the elementary school students. So that's some huge, at, at Falls Elementary, there's probably the most inside work to be done. So there's two questions gonna be on the ballot, okay? Question two is contingent on question one. If you say no to question one, you're basically saying no to question two. If you say yes to question one, you can still say no to question two. But if you say yes to them both, that's what we'd be happy with. <laughs> so this is exactly how it's gonna read. Um, and this one is related to the, it's gonna be actually 14.2 million to provide funds to better the school and the facilities. And this all includes as well the outside work that needs to be done at the high school. If you pull up to the high school or the elementary school today, it looks pretty good. I mean, the brickwork looks pretty good. 
if you get close enough, you can see the grow between the bricks. It's called pin tucking. <laughs> I've learned a lot through this whole process. That's all going to be fixed. The pool area, they need different, better ventilation. That's why the building gets white in the wintertime, because all that chlorine seeps out, because they don't have the right ventilation. So we're going to fix all that. So this is the first question. And then question two. Question two is related to some improvements that we want to make at the arena and at the stadium. Historic Bronco Stadium, we want to see this preserved, right? There are some fixes that need to be done, some preservation type things that need to be done to the front of Bronco Stadium. Also, have you ever gone to the bathroom when you're at a football game? <laughs> yeah. It's a little horrifying. <laughs> so the bathrooms are on the slate as well as the locker rooms. Now there are locker rooms underneath the bleachers. They're not technically locker rooms. They really just have benches running around. There's no showers or lockers or anything. There's also no ventilation. So you can only imagine, <laughs> especially in August when they have football games, how stifling it is down there. So getting the right ventilation down there, getting them some actual locker rooms. At the arena, kind of exciting. Um, the proposition is to, on the west side of the arena, so if you're looking at the arena from the Falls High School parking lot, it would be the side to your right, so where the practice football field is, to expand out and add in varsity and junior varsity locker rooms for the Bronco girls and Bronco boys hockey teams. Now, this will, will not only serve the hockey teams because we're also going to have a huge storage area in the side here for all the football equipment for the guys when they practice out in that fo football field, uh, track, softball, baseball, all of them would have a section in this area to store. So it would be right there instead of having all these random little buildings all over. So that's question two. And again, you can say no to question two. It's another four million. Um, but you can still say yes to question one, or you can say yes to them both. Now, how much is this going to cost? That's what everybody wants to know. So they did, again, a, a survey. And the average cost of a home in International Falls right now is $161,200. $161, kind of an odd amount, but that's what it is. So if you answer yes to question one, and you have a home worth about $160,000, it's going to cost you $8 a month on your taxes for question one. Yes? You said 160000 for International Falls. Yes. Don't you mean for the school district? Well, it would be within the school district, yes. Okay. Because that's why, because our average is only about 90000 in International Falls. Okay, well, they so, did a, yeah, we thought it was high too. Yeah, but yeah that's including the lake properties, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the school district. I just want to make yes. sure that's clear, because we're good point. considerably less here in town. Yeah, that's a good point. If you say yes to question two, it's only going to add $3 a month if you have a home worth about $160,000. So $11 a month is a fancy coffee, if you think of it that way. And it's an investment in our children. Um, I know a lot of people say, why don't you just build a new school? It costs about $400 million to build a new school. So to do 14 million of improvements on what we have when what we have is, can be improved, um, I think that's the right, personally think that's the right way to go. If you want to go to the next one. So that's all I have. Did you guys have any questions? And I'm here just to inform. We're trying to get the word out. I know a lot of people don't understand exactly what the referendum is for. They think we're just asking for money, operating expenses. That's not what it's for. This is for the kids. You can see there are going to be significant improvements in classrooms and class uh, you know, updates in the athletic fields. We need to do that. I can also tell you we've applied for grants. We received a solar grant from the um, Minnesota Power. So we are putting in a solar panel field in the back of the high school, which is pretty exciting. Our investment is only about $100,000, and we'll make that back within three years. Just out of curiosity, why wouldn't that go on the roof? Some, something with the way the roof is built. I, don't, I asked the same question. I'm like, doesn't that go on the roof? But no, it doesn't. So are putting that in terms I can understand. That. Yeah. Something to do with the roof. <laughs> no, something to do with the roof. I don't know. I don't know the technical part of it, but yes. 
So if this passed, how long would it take before all these? Good question. So if this passes, and the reason we chose to have the a ballot, have it on the ballot in August rather than November, is because if we get it on the ballot in August, we can get all the specs done, get all the bids in, get all the people hired to start the spring of 2025. Yeah. How many surveys did you send out, do you know? Every mailbox in International Falls, every registered mailbox in International Falls got one, or in our school district. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. In our school district. Do you, do you know how many that is? I think it was probably close to 6,000. Okay, because I mean, that's that how you got to the 18% return. Yeah. You'd have to know what the total Nexus, yeah, they have, they have the exact total. I would imagine around 6,000. Because you had way more than than uh, what you guys are looking at doing in this bonding, are you guys coming up with a game plan of setting money aside to be able to do some of the other work once this, this gets finished? That's a good question. We actually do have money set aside. There is specific money for capital improvements, and we do have some of that, like for the solar project. Okay. Our 100000 was already budgeted and in there for that. Um, and like I said, we'll make that back in three years. So yes, we do get a certain amount of money every year for capital improvements. That's maintenance like we've kept up the roof of all the buildings and you know that kind of internal we replaced the boiler at the high school and at falls elementary so this also includes the air uh, air exchangers while we don't need air conditioning in our schools the air exchangers do make it more comfortable and they've only got that in part of the elementary school so it's to complete that project and then do like i said all that ventilation down by the pool so we just went through a process very similar to this. Yeah. We understand. You're, you're yeah, speaking I know. to I know. Yeah. And I guess one thing I do want to point out, too, is, and, and this isn't meant to sound snarky, I guess, would be the way to say it, but as a school district, we could get about $10 million without going to referendum that would still raise the taxes. But we decided that that's not how we want to do this. We want to do it the right way. We want people's input, and we want people to vote. So, I, I, you know, I hate to say that, and say, it, it, it sounds, like I said, kind of snarky, but it's, a, it's the reality. There is funding out there available, available to us to, to, to get without being voted on. Mm -hmm. And we're choosing not to do it that way. Any other questions? I have this book if you guys want to look. This picture actually struck me the most. This is the sanitary sewer replacement in the high school. Have you been talking to Ted Broke? Yeah, where is Ted when we need him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, well, This is down by lot. the tech rooms. And there's a lot of, because that's 60 plus years old. Almost. That ain't gonna yeah. make it. Nope. Just wanna see. I'm just gonna send that right to Ted. <laughs> yeah, say that's at the high school. I was trying to send him a pickleball video yesterday, but I couldn't get it done. Yeah. And there's lots of pictures in this book, so if you want to look at it after, I'll, I'll stay, and if you want to page through it, feel free. But thank you for having me. Well, thank, thank you for, for coming. coming. This is great. Yes. And I'm assuming they're talking about a different type of group learning that I, than I used <laughs> in high school. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. is in school. That's oh, school. group. Oh, uh, gr you, group you, learning. You slept on a rug, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Kindergarten. Yeah. Group learning. Yeah. All right. Let's go to item number two: a mayoral proclamation observing the 80th anniversary of the D-Day oh. invasion, uh, June 6th, 2024. Uh, chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, second. Second by Councillor Wagner. <laughs> Discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, approve the order of removal or repair in the matter, uh, the matter of hazardous building located at 308 Fifth Street, City Attorney. Um, so, like all the other orders to remove or repair, um, this is just asking for you to sign it and we'll get it served. Hopefully they take care of it within 60 days. If it doesn't happen that way, it allows me to bring it into court. This building is the apartment building over this way that got um, burnt. burnt. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the fire marshal, I know, has tried a little bit to work with the owner. I made one 
phone call to try work with the owner. We're not really sure if we're going to get pushback or compliance, um, but this is the easiest way for us to find out and stay on track. I, just just uh, before we I go to uh, a motion and second, if this in, building is insured, why isn't this just happening naturally? That That's the questions I always have on these buildings. As a requirement, like from the insurance? Yeah. Um, you can, it can depend on the type of payout you take. Um, so assuming he didn't want the funds to put back into the building to put it back up to market value, he is similar, like when you total a car, you can just get paid a lower amount for your totaled car. You get to keep it and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. It's just a lower amount. And that is probably what happened if he's not looking at fixing it. Okay. So did I understand right that the insurance will cover hauling all the debris and all the stuff out, right? That's what I if heard. If that's what they... To should. clean it up. If The city was, won't get stuck with... No, this way it up. would. Yeah. Huh? This way the city would. Yeah. The, we can't make mm -hmm. the insurance pay. Ah, I was told that the insurance would cover it. Mm -hmm. Most likely the way he took out his insurance claim money was not that way. Ah. So this ultimately gets billed to the city. We put it on their taxes. Yeah. Correct. So I got it second hand then, not first hand information. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we learn our lesson today? Yes, also? I learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a, oh, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, move forward. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Kaler. Any <clears throat> discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we have a request uh, from the police chief to suspend calendar parking for the annual outage of PCA June 14th through the 24th. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Second. Second by Councillor Wagner. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. Aye. Boy, you're fast. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Motion carries 4 0. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next, we have approved volunteer paid on call fire, firefighter roster as presented by the Fire Civil Service Commission and approved hiring of the top six with an effective date of July 1st, 2024. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion? Any none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. I already voted. I can't do that. 4 0. <laughs> <sighs> Trying to mess up the whole thing. All right. Uh, acknowledge the Certificate of Clinical e Excellence presented to the International Falls Ambulance Service by the Minnesota Emergency Services Regulatory Board. Uh, chair would entertain a motion to approve that, to acknowledge that. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Wegner. <clears throat> so this is uh, this is good stuff, guys. We yeah. we have such a good ambulance here in our community. I know that we talk about how we're struggling with it. There's been some uh, financials that are going to be coming to the city out of the legislature to try to help with our ambulance, but this really goes to show the good work that uh, our ambulance is doing in our community. And um, I just, I just want to say thank you to the chief and all of his staff that makes this possible. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to agree in that. Yeah, knowing that they're award worthy, well, I don't believe really come to a shock to any of us that. They get the recognition and also I'd just like that I talked to a individual who had personal connection with the uh, accident up Island View last week and how impressed he was with the ambulance and the fire department and the whole operation. It took the jaws of life to get those girls out, right? That's what I heard. Awesome. Awesome work. All right. We call the question. Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. All right, now we have the couple that uh, came up, and I don't know what order they're in, so we'll just go 
first come, first serve. Uh, we have the on hook, on the hook fish and chips. This is a uh, mobile food license. Um, it passed the land use and legislation earlier. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to approve that license. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Second. Second by Councillor Wegner. <clears throat> Any discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries 4 0. Now we'll go to. It's just so weird in our world. The Midwest Dabin Cabin, a cigarette license. Uh, chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll move. We have a motion from Councillor Wigner, second by Councillor Kaler. Um, the, the one big discussion that we had at uh, land use and legislation about this specific one is um, they filled out on their form that they are going to be a smoke shop and the only thing that we, we regulate in the city for a smoke shop would be a $25 cigarette license. They also have hemp on there and we had a lengthy discussion about um, the ability to be able to sell hemp products in the city it brought up a bigger conversation but this license specifically is just for cigarettes the conversation that we had though is we have other places in our community that sells thc mm -hmm. um beer soda i don't know how you want to and it just it's sold on the shelf there's no it's not behind the the counter or anything like that and we just we're starting to really have some questions and the Department of Cannabis in the state hasn't formed any rules or guidance on any of this and we're we're just kind of meandering a road. So I just wanted to bring that up that that was one of the discussions that we had. Um, I know our city attorney's been keeping up on, uh, on all the rules and regulations and we keep it as a permanent uh, question on the land use and legislation to be updated on that. But this one before us is literally just a cigarette yeah. license. Any questions? All right, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 <clears throat> 0. Next, we have uh, first we'll go with the license for. This is a uh, license for Never Quit LLC Twisted Tacos Food Truck. Um, they, I believe, as of right now, do not meet all the requirements, but there's something that we have to put a contingency on with this? Yes, we're waiting for approval from the Minnesota Department of Health, and I did speak with um, them today, and upon application, they would receive that within two weeks. So, uh, the chair would entertain a motion to approve this uh, on contingent that they get the Minnesota Department of Health license. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Wagner. Discussion. So uh, tell me that motion again. So the, the motion is to approve the license and it will be approved if uh, she gets a um, follow up from the Department of Health saying that he meets all the qualifications for the Department of Health. Okay. When do you think that follow up was gonna be? Um, he. Uh, Mr. Hedke indicated he was sending the application today and um, Jared from the Minnesota Department of Health said it would take one to two weeks to complete that. So I would give it the two full weeks. Okay. And he would actually have the actual certificate that the city requires. Yeah. So then I'm assuming he's just parking in precarious ways uh, in different parking lots and towns. As of right now, he has. Yes. <laughs> He is not operating in the city. He is <clears throat> operating in the county at, yeah. at this current time. That's where I've okay. seen it. Yeah. Well, in the county. Yeah. yeah. He is, we have not heard that he is selling food out of that truck in the city limits. Okay. The truck has been in the city limits. Mm -hmm. He said he drives it to town to fill it up with it, to stock it and things yeah. at the well, store. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean. Good enough. Any other clarification or discussion? Nope. All right, hearing none, call the question. Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. And I will vote yes. Motion carries. Okay, now we go to the, the last one. Now this is the, the one that gets slightly dicey in my world. So this is to allow these, uh, the Twisted Tacos food truck to set up in the park um, for the outage. Now that's June 14th through the 22nd. The reason I have a, just a little hesitation on this is because there's a possibility he doesn't have his license before the, the date of the um, event. That was my yeah. So, um, the, the please. Can I add to that? So I just want to explain, I did explain to Mr. Hedke that if we did not receive it, for example, yeah. by the 14th, that he could not open up in the park until we received the um, certificate from the Minnesota Department of Health. Okay, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. So, um, all right, so then I guess the, I would, Chair would request that we uh, move forward to allow the Twisted Tacos food truck to be in Smoky Bear Park June 14th through the 22nd, pending him having all, all of the things right. And this would cost uh, $100 per the, um, the reservation fees that the city has. He, he takes and brings it to you, Lisa. The certificate. The certificate. Yes. So, so you visually see it and... I have to have it in my hand. Okay. Yep. All right. He won't... Um, the Jared from the Minnesota Department of Health said he would not have a paper copy to him via mail by the um, 14th, but he could have it by email, and we would accept an email copy. And I can confirm it with the Minnesota mm -hmm. Department of Health also. Okay. All right, so Chair would entertain a motion to approve that uh, setup in the park. Oh. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Do we have a second? <clears throat> we'll second. Second by Councillor Wagner. Discussion. Did, did I just, and that's not telling anybody how to run his business, but it sounds like we had a food truck before we needed, knew all what we needed to be able to operate it, or he just decided to. Um, Start doing it and telling. I'm just curious. That's all. So I can explain that to you. We have been working with Mr. Hedke for probably a couple months now. He's mm -hmm. fully aware of what is required. Mm -hmm. um, just has not completed in a timely fashion. All right. Thank you. And I just wanted to add one of the other conversations that we had at land use and legislation is this is kind of bizarrely odd that this is the only person that has reached out to us to set up for the shutdown. This is the last meeting we have before yeah. the shutdown. We usually have at least yeah. two that are set up there and that would never have included this gentleman. So it's just it's just kind of weird. I mean, we've always had people reach out to us way before now for the shutdown. So um, in a way, I'm really glad that we have one person there for the contractors yeah. to be able to go out and get some food from. So, all right, we have a motion and a second. I'll call the question. Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, we'll go to the reports of administrator, attorney, department heads, city administrator. Um, thank you, Mayor Council. I have nothing additional. Okay. City attorney? I don't have anything additional, and I'm going to split. My son's playing t ball, so uh. I'm going to run. Do you got to get there and coach third base? Uh, I don't coach him. Uh, <laughs> I, I will help my daughter, but not my son. Yeah. He's too much for me. <laughs> Most of, section. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Most of the T-ball I watch, they miss third and they just kind of go behind the bench and come all the way around. Yeah. This is the one, this is the program in the falls for kids that are three and under. Oh. Good luck. Oh, oh, oh you get, oh. all I can say out to that is you get what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you stop yeah. by and get some ice cream afterwards. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, department heads, chief, do you have anything? Uh, reports to the mayor, council committees, boards, and commissions. Anybody, anybody, anybody? I just, uh, really quick, I don't think we have had the conversation. We did, uh, we did receive some funding for the ambulance. It was somewhere between two hundred and seven and two hundred and eight thousand dollars. The chief and city administrator are waiting for an email to come through. Um, if everybody that was eligible to receive money applies, we'll get the 207, 208. In the uh, event that somebody does not uh, sign up to receive the money, we get more. 
but we have to be those people to sign up and get the money, so watch your emails, please. Yeah, I think to be clear, the application process closes the end of September. Yeah. They don't even have the application process hammered out. This yeah. isn't something that's hit the mailboxes next week. Yeah. You watch for it. Why put are it, you here it, put right it, now? Put sticky, note, put sticky notes on your computer. Did I look today? <laughs> Did I look for it today? <laughs> All right. Um, we're an audience. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to bring anything forward? All right. We'll go to uh, correspondence. Uh, in your packet, you have Coochin County Commissioner's Minutes from May 7th. Uh, Coochin County Respite Care and Hospice Tax Force letter, May 20th. I just want to point out that uh, uh, the city administrator and myself had been sitting on that, uh, kind of tag teaming the meetings. And um, the reason that they were formed is uh, Fairview was cutting um, some of their services in our community. And a citizen led group had stepped up to the plate and invited um, key, key players in our community and they have uh, got Essentia is going to be hiring someone um, in our community to fill those roles for um, what that, that Fairview is doing. Well, that's, that's good, good news. Good news. Mayor, so, yes. I can add to that too that um, For You Home Health is also opened in our community and filling some of those gaps also. Yeah. Not everything that Fairview did but I was on a call with, um, or I was on the, um, drawing a blank of the organization, um, but they had met with the coordinator there and she explained the program and for, for you Home Health is also doing some of those um, services also. Excellent, um, fantastic. Uh, International Falls, Rainier, Rainy Lake Convention, Visitors and Bureau uh, meeting information uh, is in your packet. And uh, our next regular City Council meeting will be on Monday, June 17th at 5.30. This meeting is adjourned.